wonder of it all. I pray that you have not. <clears throat> the wonder of it all. Salvation, the amazing grace that he's given to us. <clears throat> well, I want to thank you once again for being faithful this morning in the new year. And uh, I know many stayed up, many of you didn't, many of you said, ha, ah. <laughs> ah, whatever, but around our house it wasn't, you know, we didn't have an option. Bang, blah, 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 all around the house, I was just like, okay, I guess I'm not sleeping anytime soon, and, uh, but I'm thankful that you were, uh, you were faithful in being here this morning. Please be in prayer for uh, Mr. Hill, Nathan Hill's father. Um, he went in for a checkup this week. He was having trouble sleeping. Went in for a checkup on Wednesday, and they immediately admitted him to the ER. And he is uh, at uh, Gwinnett Medical, and uh, they're talking about stents later this week. Um, his heart's only uh, pumping at 25 or 30 percent versus uh, the 50 or 60 percent he should be. Uh, above 50 percent, I think is what he said, above 50 percent. And uh, I'm getting a nod, so praise the Lord. I got <laughs> A nurse is nodding, so I'm good. Uh, but uh, but uh, just be in prayer uh, as the doctors have wisdom concerning that. Continue to be in prayer for those who've lost loved ones over the holidays, as well as just those who are uh, remembering the loss of, of a loved one. And uh, there are several. Uh, Brother Ron's uncle, right? I'm going to say it right. His uncle passed away yesterday, 92, 92 years old. And... Uh, uh, he wanted to end the year right. He ended it right. Exactly. He ended it right. <laughs> and uh, so just be a prayer for them, though, as a family. And uh, thankful for the years God had given him. And, uh, you know, God is so good. And, and we've, we need to understand these things of how good he is. Take your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, if we, once you find your place, if you would, let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Luke chapter 16. We're going we're gonna to think and talk about this new year for just a few moments this, minute, this morning. Luke chapter 16. If you find your place, let's stand for the reading of God's Word. <clears throat> Luke chapter 16. We're going to begin in verse 1. Luke chapter 16, verse 1. You know, you're holding the precious Word of God. I hope this isn't the first time you've opened it this year. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, come on, clear your throats. I hope this isn't the first time you've opened it this year. Yeah, I got you laughing, didn't I, Miss Jennings? Uh-huh. <laughs> I know, they're going to get all over me in a minute. Luke chapter 16, beginning in verse 1. The Bible says this, And he said also unto his disciples, Jesus Christ speaking to them, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for thou mayest be no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For the Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig to beg. I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do. That when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his Lord's debtors unto him and said unto the first, How much owest thou unto my Lord? And he said, An hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much owest thou? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take thy bill and write four score. And the Lord commended the unjust steward, because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much, and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, 
Who shall give you that which is your own? A famous verse that we know very well, verse 13, No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. This morning I want to preach a simple message entitled, It's Not Mine. It's not mine. Father, I pray that you bless the reading of your word, and I pray that you give me clarity of thought, clarity of speech, that I may convey the words you've given to me, and I pray that I would preach according to your word, and I pray that we would leave change because of your word this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Here we have the story of a steward. A steward being someone who literally takes care of somebody else's property, somebody else's belongings. And this unjust steward, this, it says the Lord, had, this rich man, he had a steward. <clears throat> now, to equate that, you remember um, Joseph in the Old Testament, who was mistreated and sold into slavery, and, and uh, he went through all those things, but he was eventually, he was made the overseer uh, under, under Potiphar. Y'all remember the story? And he would be, have been considered the steward. Okay? He was uh, head over everything that Potiphar had. In fact, so much that Potiphar didn't even know what he had. But God blessed because of Joseph. Because Joseph was, was, was following the Lord. Well, here we have a different scenario, though. Here, this steward, the Bible says that he waste, he had wasted the, the Lord's good. Now, the, the word Lord here is a lowercase. This is just the master of the house. He says he's been wasting his goods, just spending it out. Well, the master here, the, the Lord of the house, he finds out about it. And he's going to question the, the steward about it. And the steward, uh, he's... There in, in verse 2, and he called him and said unto him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give account of your stewardship. Tell me what you've done with what I have, of which is mine. The steward said within himself, What shall I do? The steward was afraid. He was scared. Because he, he knows what he's going to have to answer. And he knows what's going to happen because of that. <coughs> Here he says, uh, the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For, the, for my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. He knows he's about to lose his position because he misused the Lord's goods. So he decides. Here he goes, I am resolved what to do. He's come up with an idea. A light bulb forms. Ding! I have an idea. So he goes and he begins talking to everyone who owed the Lord, the master of this house, the Lord, something. He starts traveling, going and, and calling them and having them come in. Well, why is he doing this? Well, he's afraid. He, number one, he's going to lose his stewardship, which means he loses his job. And it talks about, he says, to, uh, <clears throat> I cannot dig. Maybe he's older. I don't know. But this gives the, the, the sentiments of he's unable to dig or to work. And he says, to beg, I am ashamed. So here he is, he's in a, in a quandary, and here's where he makes his decision. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get everybody else on my side. So he goes again, and he starts talking to everybody that owes the Lord money. And he says, how much do you owe, owe him? Oh, a hundred. Oh, sit down quickly. Mark through that and write 50. And he comes up to the other one and he says, how much do you owe? He, well, I owe him 100. Well, scribes through that and mark 80. You see what he's doing? He starts cutting everybody else's bills. Now, he's still hurting them lords, were the, the master of the house, isn't he? I mean, that's what they owed him. And now he's cutting it away. Verse 8, and the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. Now, please understand, as I've read through this, and I've read through it several times, uh, this is almost a, 
uh, what we might consider sarcasm at this time. You know, he's done wisely. Yeah, wisely for himself. He's made himself, and notice what he says. He says that he, he's done wisely for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. And I say to you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unri unrighteousness. He's, saying making, he's literally saying he's making friends with those, the, those in the world, those mammon, those of the flesh. He begins making friends with them so he has a place to go. So he has a place to, to, to fall from. He says, because when you fail, you have a place to go. He that is faithful, and then he, here's the rebuke. He that is faithful in that which is least. The smallest thing. Also is, is, is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, those things of the flesh, those minor things, those things that were given to you, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if ye have, have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? See, here he's rebuking the steward because he was unjust with that which wasn't even his. He was misusing the finances, the property of something that didn't belong to him. It was not his. It was not his to decide on. It was not his to do. It was not his to give. It was not his to misuse. Yet he did. Yet he did. This steward wasted his owner's goods. When he was found out, he went and made friends with others. The Lord commended him. This was, this was sarcastic. This was, uh, uh, you know, yeah, you did good. You did good for yourself. Because when I fire you, basically, you are going to need somewhere to go. And then he lays it out. No man can, no servant can serve two masters. There's a choice made here. There is a decision made here. Most times when we talk about stewardship, we talk about money or things, don't we? When somebody gets up here to preach or, or we start talking about finances and, and we're in the process of working on the budget for this upcoming year and we're trying to lay it out properly and, and make sure that we, we can show it properly uh, this coming year, a little bit different than last year where we can you know, show you what we budgeted and what we've spent and we're working hard on making sure it's done right. Because, you know, because we, this is God's money. It's God's house. It's his money. It's his house. So as we're working on that, you know, but when we talk about stewardship, that's the first thing that comes to our mind. We talk about, in fact, in another passage where he talks about stewarding, he talks about talents. One man was given five talents. One man was given three. One man was given one. And, and, and then he came back into town and he said, give account of what you've done. And the five, man with five, he doubled it and he gave him ten. The man with three, doubled it, gave him six. The man with one, hit it. He says, and he was unjust. He didn't use his master's goods properly. Here in this passage, He's speaking of finance. He's speaking of goods. He's speaking of being a bad steward of what was given to him. This morning, instead of talking about your finances, instead of talking about uh, your goods, the things you have, physical material, I'm going to talk about something that's, that, that so many times is intangible. But it's not yours. Something that you consider yours, something that you consider that, that you have, that, that's all about you, but it's not. And we're going to talk about this this morning. I've, I've entitled the message, It's Not Mine. We're going to talk about life and time. Life and time. You see, God created time 
and life. Didn't he? Well, let's look at that. Genesis uh, chapter 1, verse 3, it says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And this is the first time this, sentence, this, is, this phrase is used. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Time. Our sense of time. Our sense of time is based on a 24-hour clock of night and day. And some of us uh, have jobs where it come, becomes very often confused as to what is night and what is day. And I want you to understand here, God created time. See, we serve an eternal God. There is no time with God. But for us, there's time. God created time for us. God not only created time, well, it says uh, let, in verse 20 of chapter 1, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. God began creating life. And fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Verse 21, And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. In verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. And the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. God created time. God created life. So, just based on our common rules of, of understanding of ownership, the person who creates it, what? Owns it. Right? I mean, if you create something, if you build something with your hands, and it's new, and you go and you get a copyright, and you make sure that it's, it's, you've got the papers on it, and nobody can copy it. Why? Because it belongs to you. Right? God created time. Who does it belong to? Him. God created life. Who does it belong to? Him. God. It's not mine. It belongs to him. He created it. But I, what's amazing is not only did God create it, not only did God institute it, but God also gives time in life. God gives time in life. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Here, <coughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah, the prophet, God's speaking through Jeremiah. And he says, before you were formed, I knew thee. He is the one that institutes life. There were several women in the Bible that understood and recognized that only God could give life. You remember Sarah? We talked about her, Abraham and Sarah. She was barren. She hadn't had children. But God said, you'll have a child. And what happened? She had a child. And there were other instances in the Bible, or several other women, where God said, you will have a child. And they did. You understand, God gives life. And you know what? He also can give or take away time. In, in Isaiah chapter 38, verse 5, the prophet here, God's speaking through him, and he's talking about it. He says, go and say to Hezekiah, Hezekiah the king here, and he says, go and say to him, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. 
Hezekiah was uh, going to die. And <coughs> Hezekiah prayed to God with tears and said, there's so much more basically I want to do for you and so much more I, I believe I can do for you. And God laid it out and said, okay, I've seen your prayer and I've seen your tears. I'm going to give you 15 more years. And you know what? God gave him 15 more years. He gave him time. Because see, I want you to understand, Colossians 1 says this. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things are created by him and for him. Many times we don't get to that next verse though, verse 17. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Keep going. We serve a God who loves us and he gives us birth, he gives us life. He's the one that has created us and he also gives us time. He's the one that controls our length of days. You know, the Bible says we're not promised tomorrow. Why? Because that's in God's hands. There is nothing you can do, nothing you can say to prevent death tomorrow if God's got it planned. Because He's the giver and taker of life. He's the giver and taker of time. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. He holds your existence. It's not mine. He created life. He created time. He gives time and life. Therefore, life and time belong to Him. They're His. Therefore, that makes us stewards. If my life belongs to Him, what I call life, living, what I call time, if it all belongs to the Creator of life and time, then I am simply a steward of the life and time God's given me. Yeah. And so are you. And so are you. Here, this steward used his goods, his Lord's goods, unwisely. So this morning, the question has to be asked, as we start a new year, and many of you maybe have written down New Year's resolutions, I'm going to do this different this year, I'm going to try to do this better this year, I'm going to recognize our resolutions don't need to be about what we think we need to do. They need to be about what God wants us to do because my life is His. My time is His. It belongs to Him. How are you stewarding your life, your time for Him? How are you using your life and your time? Because it's His. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's his. Here, the unjust steward, he's going to have to give an account. So are we. In Romans chapter 14, verse 12, So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. We're going to give an account of ourselves. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. I want you to understand, we're going to have to give an account for how we've used God's life and God's time. How have you used it? Will you be like this steward and say, Oh no, what am I going to do? Look, when the day comes and we stand before the Lord and He just says, Hey, look, I, look, if you know Christ is your Lord and Savior, 
Praise the Lord. We'll spend eternity with Him. He will see Christ's righteousness. But I still, under, I still recognize that I'm going to have to give an account for what I've done. He talks about in the book of Revelation of, of, of um, crowns and, and things that, we can, that He'll give us that we can then throw back at His feet because so He is the only one worthy to receive glory and honor. But he talks about there in the New Testament about our works being tried by fire. Whether they be wood, hay, and stubble, or gold and precious jewels. When we look at, when we kick off this new year, and we're kicking it off right in church, we're kicking it off right in God's Word, I want you to understand this life that you're living is not yours. This time that you have is not yours. It's God's. It's His. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13, Every work, man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Here in verse 13, he says, No servant can serve two masters. I want you to understand, we're a servant one way or another. We're either serving God or we're serving ourselves. You know, there's a lot of people that say you're either serving God or you're serving Satan. No, I believe we're either serving God or we're serving ourselves. Because see, the worst enemy I have is not Satan, it's me. It's my fleshly desires. It's my sin nature that I have in me. Just like Paul said, those things that I want to do, I don't do. Those things that I don't want to do, those are the things I do. So this morning, we recognize that God created life and God created time. We understand that God gives life. He also gives and takes away time. Because of that, we understand time, life belongs to Him. He, has the, he is the owner of them. And we are but stewards. You will either serve yourself with your life and time, or you will serve the master who gave it to you. This servant here in Luke chapter 16, I believe he was serving himself with his master's goods. And when he was called into question, he was ashamed. He was embarrassed. He was afraid. I don't want to stand before my Lord and Savior scared, embarrassed, or afraid. If life and time belong to Him, then we are simply stewarding it for Him. Managing it for Him. That means those agenda books, you know, those calendars you're getting and you're working on and you're thinking through for this year, that calendar of days doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Him. Your daily agenda doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Him. Our life is not ours. It's His. So the question is, how? let's just stop for a moment. 2016 ended at midnight last night for us. How well did you do stewarding his life last year? How well did you do stewarding his time last year? As you look back, did you use it more for yourself than for him? Did you use it more for material things? Than spiritual things? Did you use it more for those things that would bring glory and honor to yourself or glory and honor to Him? I think we'd all be good to, all do good this morning to make sure that we are reminded that it's not mine, it's not yours, it's His. This morning, do you know Christ is your Lord and Savior? 
You say, well, I, I want to give my life, I want to give my heart, I want to serve Him more and more this year with my heart and life. But until you give Him your heart and life, until you recognize and you put your faith and trust in Him, can I tell you, it will be a constant battle because your flesh will win. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't dwell there. Without the Holy Spirit, you are powerless. Christian, today... I called you Christian on purpose. That means you know Him as Lord and Savior. So the question is simply this. How will you steward this year for Him? Because it's not your life and it's not your time. It's His. Unsaved person this morning, whether you like to think so or not, it's not your life and it's not your time because you didn't do it yourself. God gave it to you. So give it back to him. Christian, steward your, no, steward his life that he's given you for him. Use it wisely for him. May we go out this morning and there be a change in our mind and a change in our life, a change in our thinking. No more is it what do I want to do. What do I need to do? Where do I need to be? It needs to be, God, where would you have me? God, this is your calendar. Because this is your life. I need you to lay it out for me. You say, but, but Brother Keith, I, you know, if I look at a yearly calendar, I don't know how, how that works. Is God just going to magically pin things in? No. It's called walking with him daily in his word and in prayer. Constantly, constantly following him. So, I end with this question. How did you steward last year? It was his year. Did you give it to him? Did you live for him? Or do you look back and you find, your, find more of you living for yourself and your own needs and your own wants? See, it's not mine. It's not yours. You're just a steward. You're taking care of somebody else's goods. So let's start looking at it that way. May we live our life that way, starting today. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. We are stewarding His life. We are living His life. You are using His time. More importantly than money, more importantly than goods... How are you using it? How are you using his life and his time? I think if we were all honest with ourselves, we didn't use his life or his time to the best of our ability last year. And if we were honest, we would be scared, we'd be ashamed, we'd be nervous. The Lord showed up this morning and asked us, what'd you do with your time this past year? What'd you do with your life this past year? I think all of us, if we were honest, we'd be a little embarrassed with that. Maybe we'd be a lot embarrassed with that. Here's what I'm challenging you with us this morning. Number one, recognizing that you are simply a steward. You are taking care of his things. And number two, the decision made, I'm going to use his life and his time more for him this year than I did this past year. I'm deciding today I'm going to give him his calendar back. I'm going to give him his agenda back. I'm going to give him his, what, what does the Bible say, preeminence, that he might have the preeminence in my life, first place. 
That's our decision this morning. I wonder how many will decide that with me this morning. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, let's stand to our feet for a time of invitation. During this invitation, I want to challenge you to come and get on your knees before God. If you can't get on your knees, I encourage you to come and get, sit down on this front row and say, God, I'm giving back to you your life and your time, and I want to use it according to your will in my life. As the music begins to play, as Brother Ron begins to sing, would you come? Would you come this morning and say, God, it's not mine. It's not my life. It's not my time. I'm giving it back to you this morning.